for today's project, I'm going to show you how I make these very simple, very easy to do cookie cutters. I use a couple pieces of software to make 3D printed cookie cutters. Um, I've had my printer for a little over a year now and primarily what I use it for Primarily what I use it for is making cookie cutters, not so much for cookies, but more for the ceramics that I do. Um, a lot of times I need, I need cutters to cut out different patterns and shapes that would take me forever if I had to cut them all out by hand. So it came in handy that I can make my own shapes and make them to the specific size that I need. So what I'm going to do for this today is I'm going to show you how I use the Autodesk Fusion 360 and a little add-in right here. It's Sam's Cookie Cutter Maker and it's their Bella add-in and also my vector software. So how I use all how I use the two softwares and the one add-in to make cookie cutters similar to this. Now this is just a cutter that I made. Um, I needed a certain size for mugs. I was making little tops that go on my mugs and I was having a hard time finding the scallop to be the exact size that I needed so this came in handy. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to my Adobe software and I have this heart already done. I drew this in Procreate so I brought it in as a um, as a PNG file and then um, I've already I already did my imaging my image trace and turned it into vectors you can see the outline so that I have already done and I'm gonna go ahead I have saved it as an SVG and when you're using Fusion 360 um, there are more options if you have if you have a commercial license. I have the um, the hobbyist license, which is free to use. So I have available a limited number of imported files that will work. SVG is one of them. So I can see if I export this. Oops export as so the two files that will work SVG and DXF so sometimes depending on what I'm doing I may have to switch back and forth depending on you know what the program you know what exactly I'm making and how Fusion 360 is reading it because there can be you know there can be some problems with Fusion 360 okay so this is the one I already did just as my sample but I'm going to show you how I how I would do that heart that I just um, just turned into vectors. So I'm in Fusion 360. I've started a new workspace, and I'm going to insert. As you can see, you know you don't have a lot of options for inserting actual designs, but SVG and DXF are two of them. Now, Adobe is not a free software and it is pricey, but there are other options for um, programs that use SV that can make SVGs. Inkscape is one. It um, for sure is a free program. There's other converters out there that are free to use. I don't know much about them because I've never used them, but I know they exist. And Silhouette Studio is another. The only thing with Silhouette Studio is that there is a free license for their basic edition, but you cannot save as an SVG. So you would have to buy an upgrade and you would have to upgrade to the business edition to be able to save any of your designs as the SVG files. And of course, that's a one time, you know, one time fee. It's not like a monthly, a monthly installment, a monthly payment or subscription like the Adobe Suite is. So I'm going to insert my SVG and I'm going to find it. I put it under Valentine's. Okay. Now for some reason, I do not know why, but if I put this in exactly the way it is, it is not going to come in the right size at all. Not even close. So 
if I did this, if I did this just how I have it, you know, just brought it in 100%, I didn't do any changes to those settings, I will show you what it does. So let's go from this side to this side and we're gonna measure and it measures in millimeters and inches. So across the heart is 2.742 inches. Now, when I saved this, it was 3.6624. So I have no idea why Fusion does not put the SVGs in the correct size. It does with the DXF, but it doesn't with the SVGs. So what I do when I use the the when I use these files, let me go back and insert it. So I'm going to go back to it. So in order to get it somewhere close to the size that I have it already designed, I'm going to change this number, the scale plane XY. So it's going to I'm going to change this to 3333. Three, three, three. And now I'm going to hit OK. So now when I go and inspect, it's not going to be exactly to the millimeter that that we just saw in my Adobe, but it's close enough. And as you can see now, it's 3.655. So 3.6624, it's close enough to me. Now maybe if I went back and tried that's possible. Let me try that last number. I'm just, I'm curious now. Let me try three, 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 four. Whoops. So now let's measure it. Yeah, so 3334 got me a little bit closer, 3.656. So it's a tad bit larger and it was 3.6624. So, I mean, either one. I'm not gonna spend all day parsing out, you know, a, a hundredth of a millimeter. Okay, so now that we have our sketch, you can see that it is closed, which in order to do this, you have to have a closed object. You cannot do, you cannot make this cookie cutter with an open object that has to be closed. So I'm going to, this is the simplest, easiest way to make the cookie cutter is to use this add-on that I'm gonna show you in just a minute. All right, so now we're ready to make our cookie cutter and we have a size we need it and everything went fine. You can see that you've got your outline and we're ready to make our cookie cutter. So just click on inside the shape and then come up to your, um, your little create tools that you have. And right here, the little gingerbread man is my Sam's cookie cutter maker, Bella, my Bella preset. So I'm gonna click on that and then you can see by this diagram all of what's on this diagram all of these all of these little sliders that you can change you can make you know you can make things bigger smaller whatever you can change it to your liking and if you want to know exactly what you're what you're changing um, right here at the top it will show you um, it will show you what each one of those things means so I have my cutter width, my cutter height, I wanted it four inches, so I'm gonna leave it where it is. And I can, you know, of course I can slide these and you know, I can change it to whatever I want. If I wanna make it bigger, I wanna make it smaller, I can do the adjusting here. Um, also the cutting edge width. This you can adjust up to one millimeter. And that is the little part at the very, very top and that is what you're actually going to be cutting your dough, or in my case, the clay with. Now, I prefer mine as small as I possibly can get it, and for this um, preset, it's 0.6 millimeters. Um, 
it just for me it gives me a cleaner cut through the clay that I like to keep it a little bit smaller but you know not everybody wants it that small like I said that's probably why this is adjustable so I like to keep mine down at 0.6 millimeters and it just it gives me a cleaner cut and then um, also the cutting edge depth that is this little part here so that's how much of that little tiny bit at the top that you're actually cutting you're cutting the um, your dough and then the cutter depth the cutter depth is the whole thing so that's how high your whole cookie cutter will be whenever you're done and then your handle size you can see how high that is so that tells you you can go all the way up to eight millimeters high which is you know it's a pretty pretty hefty handle and you know it may depend on what you prefer you know how your hand is if you like it a smaller handle or you like it a little bit larger and have a little more integrity to it it's up to you so I'm gonna keep this at six and a half and then you can also launch your 3d printer but I don't do that so I'm just gonna hit OK and then you can see below right over here it's doing all of its computing and it does all of this for you so it puts in um, it puts inside like um, offsets inside it puts the offset outside it does you know it rounds those edges so you don't have to do any of that manually because that can take quite a time if you go through and have to do each one of these things individually it can be done but I mean this to me is so much easier now this I'm not associated at all with this company I have no no product you know affiliation with them at all I'm just giving you my opinion of something I've purchased and you know it may seem like a lot of money off the you know right off the top but it's sometimes time is money at least in the way I see things sometimes so this um, I will link below in the description I will give you the link to find to find this website where to purchase it if you're interested in it um, when I bought it it was $99 I'm assuming it's still $99 um, it's possible it was more than six months ago so it's possible that it's changed I don't know but I'll give you um, I'll give you the place to find it in the description so that is it um, then after I do this, I would just go over to, I can go up here to my unsaved because it's not saved and save it as a mesh. And I have an STL, it's in millimeters. Refinement, um, higher medium. I honestly, I don't know that it really makes any difference. It's just usually on high. So I'm gonna okay. And I already, I already saved it as an STL but I'll go ahead and save it again. And then it's ready to take into my slicer. And I use, um, I use Prusa, I have a Prusa, Mi I have a Prusa Mini printer and I use the Prusa um, slicer for all of the slicing. And usually the software I normally use is um, Hatchbox, but I have some others that I'm gonna try out and see what I like but so far the Hatchbox has worked well for me and it's my um, my printer has liked it fine so okay um, so that's really about it so this shows you how you can go from a sketch again this started off as a PNG and then I went to my image trace and I turned it into a vector and then went to fusion and inserted my SVG and remember I changed that number that XY um, plane from 1 to 1.3334 in order for it to bring it into the size that I actually needed and um, and then after I brought that in went up to selected it went up to my Sam's cookie cutter and then changed all of those you know did my little sliding whatever was on the slide um, selection and you know did whatever adjustments I wanted there and then um, 
and then hit OK, and it did all the, it did all of the um, all the extruding for me. So that's it. Um, if you have any questions, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Thanks.